before the video kicks off, I tried a new mic and uh, it sort of just exploded. So the audio is a little bit messed up in this video. So my bad. Hopefully it'll be uh, good and set for the next video that I do in this style. So sorry about that. Hello, Theo here. Today I want to talk a little bit about the GP2040 software. Um, I recently did some unboxings for a bunch of the hot products and I decided that I was going to go ahead and just try it out because I've never used any software like that before. And it was a little bit of a struggle for me. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I struggled with it a little more than I probably should have because the software itself is pretty easy, but like getting into it and like learning how to use it takes a second. So here's your what the hell is this guide to the GP2040 software. So first things first, the only way that you can currently do these like editing, changing to the uh, any device that's on the GP2040 is to have a PC. You can't do this on mobile, you really can't do this on tablet. You have to have a PC in order to do this. So have a PC, that's the first step. Your second step is gonna to be to go to this URL right here. Uh, this is the software URL. If you just punch in these numbers, you will be led to like a weird like Wi-Fi internet like password type thing. You have to put the HTTP uh, colon slash slash in front of it in order to get there. So you'll need to go to this URL. So once you've clicked on the link, it's going to take you to this. It's going to say the site cannot be reached. That's because we don't have the remote plugged in right now. But I just wanted to show this off because I, this is a simple thing, but I messed it up. So if you just plug in the remote, it's going to boot up normally. See, so yeah, I put some art in there, which I will show you guys how to do in a little while. But it'll just boot up normally and uh, won't register it for needing to be edited. So this works for all the GP2040 devices, not just the hot ones, but like all of them. You have to hold down the start button as you plug it in. So you'll see here that as I plug it in, I'm holding down the start button on the end. Boom. You'll see that it comes up with like this little like screen and now it's good to go to be worked on. So you'll have to hit this reload. And then once you do, it'll take you to the actual site. So this should be your model. I have the M Ultra. That's what this is. It's current version. You just want to kind of like check through and make sure that you got everything all right here. Super important before we start anything, before we do anything at all, we're going to go here to data and backup restoration and save it. This, especially if you just got the stick out the box, this will save the current settings in your stick. So if you mess something up, you can just come back here and reload it. If you don't save this and you mess something up, you might be in kind of trouble trying to figure out how to fix it without somebody who can help you do that. So just make sure you come here and save it before we do anything else. So we're going to run through some of these settings really quick, just because I'm going to go left to right and then up to down. Uh, a lot of the stuff I actually don't know what it does. This is more just for the fighting game stuff that I know about. So input mode, you can actually change when you're plugging it in manually, when you're plugging it in manually to like the console or to your PS5. You just hold down like punch, uh, or you hold down like what would be square, triangle, R1, R2, and it'll change your input mode, but you can change it manually here. Same with like how it's reading. In, in whatever software you're using. So this might be important for if you're emulating and you're trying to play on like this to emulate. Um, gamepad settings also not super important, but like it'll let you change what your inputs are looking like. This is a right, left analog, so on and so forth. The SOCD cleaning, you can also change on the remote by itself. When you're plugging it in, if you hold left, down, right, it'll change the SOCD cleaning. So you don't need to go into the software to change it, but you can do it here if you want to. Profiles, you can set up profiles for different button inputs, which I'll show a little bit here in a couple of minutes. I don't have any profiles set up here because I only have one setting that I really need for all of my games. But for if you like want different buttons set to different places for various games, you can actually set up multiple profiles. And then as you're plugging in the remote to a console or whatever, you can hold down certain button combinations to make it happen. So let's go talk about pin mapping. This is probably the most important thing. So we're just going to go ahead and knock it out right now. Pin mapping looks daunting. It's a lot easier than it looks. It took me a minute to figure out, but it's not hard. Before I start showing you how to find your pins and everything, this is where I was talking about the profile thing. You can add profiles and change what your buttons look like here. So two ways to find the pins, this pin viewer, or if you have a manual for whatever like controller you're using, I don't know where my hot manual is right now. The hot manual will have the pins for each of the buttons, but honestly, hitting the pin viewer is way easier. So. Let's say this button right above down, right? I'm going to go ahead and hit view. I'll hit this button here. And now it's telling me that it's pin 27. So then I just look down here. 
for pin number 27. Bada bing, bada boom, here's your guy. And then you go over to this little drop down menu and you can choose whatever you want it to be. Super easy, not a problem. Only thing you need to watch out for is you are able to double map. Now that button right there is both L3 and up. That's illegal for most, um, uh, most tournaments. If we're speaking specifically of fighting games, it's illegal for most tournaments. So you want to make sure that you eliminate whatever one you don't need so that it is a single button input because if you have multiple button inputs, it's considered a macro, which is illegal for a lot of stuff, including speed runs, a lot of speed runs, and uh, fighting game tournaments. Once you've gone through and you've selected your pins, we'll do one more just for tests. This is the one that'll be above one or light punch. Boom, that's pin 18. We're gonna go over here, we'll find it. R3, I've already mapped these for what I wanted, so I'm not gonna change them right now, but you get the idea. You go down, you click on what you want, boom, double inputted, make sure you eliminate one. You're good to go. Most important thing you need to do after you've done all your mapping of what you wanted is to go down here and hit save. If you do not hit save, if you just hit reboot, if you just hit reboot, or if you just unplug your remote, it will not save all the things that you wanted. Make sure you hit save. Another way to map all your buttons, if you want to go through and map everything, is you can hit map buttons, uh, map buttons with controller. And then this will just prompt you to push what buttons you want to be what. So like I'd push what button I would want to be down, what button I'd want to be um, left, what button I want to be right, so on and so forth. I think that it's a lot easier to go through and do the individual pin mapping because most of these are going to already be what you want them to be. Most of them are already going to be set to the buttons that you want. You'll just need to make slight adjustments. Um, out the box, most of these controllers have like light punch, medium punch, heavy punch where you want them. Same with light kick, medium kick, heavy kick. So you don't need to worry about that usually, but it's a way to map the entire stick if you're interested in just mapping the whole thing from scratch. Usually this is easiest to do when you have the manual in front of you because you saw I was saying like B1, B2, you know, all that kind of stuff. Those are all on like a manual they will just show you. So I'd recommend just going and doing pin viewer and individually doing it, but that's up to you. The profile thing, like I said, you just come down here and do the exact same thing. And then it'll make it so that when you're plugging in the remote, you hold down a certain button. I'm not sure what it is. You have to check the manual for your device, but you would instantly be able to have the different set of buttons that you want to have for whatever game you're playing. Configurator. We're going to go down. Peripheral mapping, I'm not 100% sure what it does. I, the idea that I got from videos and other things I was watching is that this is for like, if you're plugging in like an unchuck or some other like extra device that would go into your uh, stick. For the HOTS, they actually have this extension port just here. So you can actually plug other things in there and then have like another thing. So I wanted to have like a loose joystick attached to my remote. Like I'm pretty sure this is where you configure that. Don't quote me on that. LED configuration. This is where you configure your LEDs, but really you want to come down to custom LED theme. This is much easier to use. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just start talking here. So first thing, don't mess up like I did. Don't, don't, do, don't make a mistake I did. So what's important here is you need to make sure you're selecting the correct layout. When I did my first set of like LED mapping, I had this uh, 16A. As you can see, there's this button right here. I don't have that button. So when I went and I did all my mapping and everything, see it would be, it would be right there. Uh, when I went to do all my mapping and everything and saved it, it didn't take because I was on the wrong stick layout. You want to make sure you're on the correct stick layout. And the stick layouts are universal. So for the most part. So especially, particularly with the hot series, like a S16 and a T16 will look relatively the same and you will always just use this 16 layout, which is very useful. Same with like stick list, 13. So just make sure you're selecting the correct stick layout so that it will take properly. A couple ways to map the colors here. Uh, if you're going for like a universal, you want it to be one color, you can just hit set all and click on what you want. Boom. Now all of it's red. Great. But you can actually do further than that. Uh, you saw it here. This is actually what color it's going to be when you've pressed it down. So I can go ahead and make it so it's red normally. So it'll be red when it's idle. And then white when I push it down. Go ahead and save that. Oops. I messed that up. Go ahead and save. All right. So. If you right click on the button, it'll show you a quick like preview of what it'll look like. See right there. The other way, I mean, you also like auto set your gradient. So like how fast it changes when you're pressing it down. 
and all of that. It's all pretty self-explanatory. The software is really easy. It's really good. It's just a little daunting when you're first doing it. The other way that you can map out your colors is you can actually click on each individual button and then change the colors themselves to what you want them to be. So we'll do this and then we'll make this one purple. Okay, make sure you save it. And then over here we'll go green and it'll transfer and we'll hit press, it'll be black, which I think black is like the lights off. I don't actually think it's like a glowing black, it's just the lights off. And then we'll go, now we'll go this one over here. We're gonna make it blue. When it's pressed, it will turn uh, white, or turn white, save that. So now these are all each individually the different colors that I wanted them to be. Uh, I really suggest this when you have custom art in your stick. Obviously the M Ultra can't put in custom art, but like a lot of these like GP2040 uh, sticks have the ability to put in custom art. So if you have it, I would recommend doing this to match your art and make it look awesome. I am really into this and it's really easy to set up and do. Just make sure that you always hit save because I had to remap these colors like three or four times. I messed up bad. Um, at first I had it on the wrong stick layout and then I didn't hit save because I thought that hitting save here would do it. It doesn't. It just saves it to this little image preview. You need to hit this save button on the bottom for it to actually save onto the stick. Once you save it, you can unplug it, plug it back in and then it'll be like the way that you want it to be. Okay, so that's this, pretty easy. This one's the one that is the most complicated to me, this display configuration. Now I showed off at the beginning my like little art that I had in there. This took a minute to get figured out, not because this part's hard, no, 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 no. It's the screen on the sticks themselves, that's hard. This little screen, big pain in the butt, big pain in the butt. They can only read black and white nothing in between no grays no shading nothing not definitely not color but like like it only reads black and white so i'm going to show you real quick uh in this little like preview screen what i'm talking about so obviously i've got like the ryu shoryuken here looks pretty good uh this is straight up just black and white pixel art only black and white no gradients i'm saying no gradients zero zero detail zero detail black and white I end up with this situation which I know is a little hard to see. This is that like famous Ryu pose from Street Fighter 2. It had some grays in it and it completely washed it out. Like it's still, ki you can still kind of tell what's going on here. And it actually looks better because you can hit this invert button again, because it only reads black and white. You can actually invert it. It actually looks a little better like this, but it will wash everything out. So when you're picking out art to put into your stick, make sure that it is black and white. That's it, only black and white, no gradients. There's a bunch of like pretty good YouTube videos about how you can sort of edit images that are in, into black and white and then making them only strictly black and white with no gradient. Um, I am not an expert in that. I kind of fiddle with it in GIMP because GIMP is my, my preferred editing software. It was hard. So you wanna make sure that it's black and white only. You'll go here, you'll click on choose file, you'll go into your files, you'll pick out what image you want and that's very easy, you hit save. Boom, done. Editing Theo here. Uh, a really important side note that I forgot to mention in this section was that you need to make sure that your file size is 128 by 64. If you don't have it in that file size, it won't fit into the stick. So you need to do the whole black and white thing and you need the file to be a 128 by 64. Let's talk a little bit about this like splash duration thing. So, for me, I currently have this set to zero. If you set it for zero, it'll always be on. So if you look right here, when I plug in my stick, boom, that image is always on right now. But a lot of people don't necessarily want that. Quick sidebar, see how I unplugged it and plugged it back in? You have to hold it, hold down start again and plug it back in, put it back into boot mode and then for the program to recognize that you've unplugged it and plugged it back in, you need to hit this little reset. If you don't do that, it won't register any of the changes that you make from here on in. So make sure that when, if you unplug it, plug it back in, just to check to make sure that everything's good. Make sure that when you set it back up to go back into the software that you hit the restart because if you don't, you're not gonna get any of your stuff saved. It'll look like it's saving, but it won't. 
But anyways, if you go back in here to the splash duration, what will happen is, is if you set this to any numbers, it'll be for, uh, I think it's in seconds. Um, it will make it so that when you're plugging this in and unplugging it, it'll show off your art for the first few seconds, but then it'll go to the default thing that most uh, of these kind of devices go to, where it's like the little button, it'll show off your buttons, it'll show you what mode it's in and stuff like that. So if you like seeing all that type of stuff, you can just have art that'll show up for a few seconds and then go away and, and show off the uh, the button input and everything else that's going on with it. So that is totally up to you on what you want to have. I personally prefer just seeing the art. I get a little bit distracted by all of the buttons and everything uh, flashing in the corner of my vision. But that is just me. Alright, so I'll set this back down to zero. I unplugged it, plugged it back in, reset the thing, save, boom. So now it should be all set. A lot of these other things are not going to super apply to what we're doing here. Um, because we can't use macros in fighting game tournaments or in speed runs. The add-ons and configurations, uh, as I'm not really sure what this is for. So if somebody knows and they want to educate me in the comments, feel free to, but I don't think this really applies to most fighting game stuff. So I'm not super concerned with this. And that's really it, guys. I, uh, I struggled a little bit figuring this out because it's my first time doing anything like this with a fight stick. And so I wanted to show you guys kind of what I learned and what I figured out. So if you liked what you saw, feel free to leave me a like, a comment, hit me with a subscribe. Uh, if you have any like details, ideas, if I put any wrong information out there, please just drop it in the comments and I'll make sure to pin it. Um, if there's any other cool information in here for this software that I didn't like catch on, that would be for mostly beginner level people, because I'm not trying to use this super hard, but like for beginner level people, drop it in the comments. I really am interested in learning a little more about this software. As always, get out there and support your locals or come support mine. I am being driven to the edge of madness. This is my third time shooting this video. I had a screen recording fail. I forgot to have the mic hooked up properly, so I had no audio in one, one take of this. I, we're, I am using sheer resolve and stubbornness. And it's mostly just because I'm having trouble using the new computer. I don't have everything downloaded properly. I haven't had everything set up. So I guess it's a good video for troubleshooting. But I am, I am on the brink of just fucking punching my computer right now. <laughs>